We now look at the behavior of the average product, which is part of the solo equation. Note that since output per worker has decreasing returns in capital per worker, as capital per worker increases, the ratio of output to capital decreases for a given technology level. This means we can decompose the solo expression for the growth of capital per worker in two parts. The first equal to the savings rate times the average product, which is decreasing in capital per worker. And the second, the product of the savings and depreciation rates, plus the population growth rate, which are invariant to capital per worker and thus are here represented by a flat line. This diagram summarizes all the dynamics of the solo model. Let's start with an economy with capital per worker equal to K0. At this point, the savings rate times the average product exceeds the product of the savings and depreciation rates plus the population growth rate. This means that capital per capita will increase precisely at the rate given by the difference between these values, represented by the vertical double arrow line. Intuitively, what happens is that every period capital is created. At every period, capital is also destroyed through depreciation and dispersed through an increasing population. While the average product is sufficiently high, such that the first effect dominates the second, the economy's net capital per capita will increase and thus capital will accumulate. This process continues with consecutive increases in capital per capita being smaller and smaller due to the decrease in the average product as capital per capita increases up to the point where the two effects exactly cancel each other as depicted in the graph by K star. We call this the steady state capital, precisely because at this point, the economy stops growing in per capita terms. The growth rate of capital per capita and consequently of output per capita becomes zero. If we try to relate this to our earlier results, it provides a framework to think on how it is that some poor countries exhibit the same pattern the model suggests. Countries like Japan, Korea, that were capital poor, grew faster than the richest economies, but eventually slowing down and converging to the richer economies in terms of long-run growth trends. Here, the model predicts zero growth at the steady state, but we'll make a simple extension further ahead to allow precisely for the long-run trend growth we see in the data. Nothing will change, just that during the transition, poorer economies will grow faster because on top of that trend growth, they also experience transitional growth due to higher average products of capital. Start with the solo model fundamental equation. The growth rate of capital per capita equals the savings rate times the average product minus the products of the savings and depreciation rates plus the population growth rate. Notice that when the first term is larger than the second, the growth of capital per capita is positive and the economy will grow. If the opposite is true, the economy will shrink. However, if the two terms exactly offset each other, then the growth rate of the economy is zero and will be in what we call the steady state. Since output per capita equals technology times capital per capita raised to alpha, we get that the steady state levels of capital and output per capita are given by the following expressions. Notice also that at the steady state, savings per worker equals the amount of capital provided for each worker. We now start playing around with the solo model, trying to understand what happens when some exogenous parameters of the solo model change. This will allow us to make predictions for cross-country differences in output per capita levels and growth rates. The first question we are going to ask is precisely what are the predictions the solo model makes regarding changes in savings rate. As we can see in the plot, a change in the savings rate has two effects. It shifts the capital depreciation and dispersion line upwards, 
and it shifts the average product of capital times the savings rate line upwards. Assume a given economy as a K0 capital level. Notice that each effect goes in the opposite direction. The first one, by shifting up the capital depreciation and dispersion line, reduces the new steady state capital level and sets the economy on a slower convergent path. The second, the shift of the average product times the savings rate line upwards, increases the steady state capital and also the growth rate of the economy. So, out of these two opposing forces, which one predominates? I will show you mathematically that the second effect always dominates. And that is the case that is illustrated in the plot. In summary, in response to an increase in the savings rate, the increase in the economy, average product times the savings rate term, more than offsets the increase in capital dispersion plus depreciation. And the overall effect is that the economy is now growing faster towards a higher level of steady state capital per capita. We now bring back the level of technology and see what happens when we observe a one-time increase in the technology level. As we can see, the increase in TFP will lead to an increase in the average product times the savings curve. For an economy with K0 per capita, this will imply a faster growth rate towards a higher level of the steady state. What about a change in the population level? Well, if it is a one-time thing, and afterwards the population growth rate stays constant, the only effect that will happen is a decrease in the capital per capita level. So if the economy was on K0, now it will move to K0 prime, as we can see in the plot. Intuitively, a one-time influx of a large number of immigrants, for example, will disperse capital per capita a lot on impact. And that's the mechanical effect that pushes the economy backwards in terms of per capita variables. Then, the abundance of labor relative to capital increases the average product of capital and makes the economy accelerate towards the same steady state. If instead we think about a permanent increase in the population growth rate, then we see a shift of the capital dispersion and depreciation line upwards. In line with what we saw before, the larger population growth rate means that capital per capita will accumulate slower, leading to a smaller capital per, per capita growth rate and also a lower steady state. Remember the steady state level of capital per capita. What would happen if the savings rate were to increase? Notice that the savings rate appears twice, so we can say immediately what would be the net effect. However, at the steady state, we know that the savings rate times the average product equals the savings rate times depreciation plus the population growth rate. Divide by the savings rate on both sides and get the following equation. If the savings rate increases, the right-hand side decreases, and so must the left-hand side. The only way this can happen is if capital increases, since alpha is less than 1. Hence, an increase in the savings rate leads to a higher level of capital per capita and consequently to a higher growth rate in the short run. What about changes in depreciation rate and the population and the technology growth rates? Notice that as long as K0 is below its steady state level, and since 1 over 1 minus alpha is greater than 0, it is easy to show that an increase in the depreciation and population growth rates leads to a decrease in the steady state capital, whereas an increase in the technology level will result in a higher level of steady state capital, and consequently to lower and higher growth rates of capital and output per capita, respectively. We are going now back to the theme of convergence. The analysis thus far shows that the solo growth model dynamics are consistent with the mechanism we build intuition for at the beginning. A poorer country, let's say at K01, all else equal will grow faster than a rich country at K02, due to the higher average product of capital. They eventually both converge to the same level of capital and therefore output per capita. Here we can see the growth trajectories. 
the poorer economy will approach the steady state faster than the richer economy, allowing for a convergence in capital, in output per capita levels, at K star. In this graph, we show how the growth rate in GDP per capita between 1960 and 2011 relates to the initial GDP level in 1960. We don't see a negative correlation suggesting that convergence in income levels across the world is not the rule. Now we understand why this may happen. Following the solar model, convergence only takes place if the steady states to which is converging are the same. The likelihood this will happen is greater the more similar countries are. Here we are including 107 countries. But just as we did before, we'll be narrowing down the country list to make the sample more homogeneous in attempt to isolate the capital accumulation and transitional growth mechanism in action. Just as before, when we include countries that are more similar, the pattern suggested by our analysis begins to emerge. Poorer OECD countries grew, on average, faster than rich in the period of 1960 to 2011. If we narrow it down even further to just European economies, we see that the fit is even better. And one can clearly see just how strong this mechanism is. A poorer country like Portugal, whose income per capita in 1960 was about half that of France at the time, grew in the subsequent 50 years at the rate of about 1.1 percentage point faster. We can also look at the solar model to understand why we can see that some countries do not converge to the levels of income of richer economies. In this example, a poorer country at K0, K01 has a lower savings rate than a richer country at K02. These countries will grow at the same speed and converge to different levels of steady state income per capita. So convergence is not observed. This is made even more clear by looking at growth trajectories. As we can see, economy one with a lower K0 and lower steady state will not converge to the steady state level of economy two. In summary, the solo model predicts conditional convergence. The idea that the lower level of capital or income per capita will lead to a higher growth rate is conditional on the value of the steady state, on which differences in savings, population, and depreciation growth rates will have an impact. This we call conditional convergence. The idea that just on the account of being poorer, an economy will grow faster and converge to the income levels of the richest economies. Absolute convergence is neither observed in reality or a prediction of the solo model. The punchline of this section is precisely to stress that poorer countries, if benefiting from the appropriate institutional factors and high savings rate, while keeping population growth relatively under control, have a powerful force for transitional growth that can set them on a path for convergence to the levels of development enjoyed by developed countries. Some countries have succeeded in that endeavor, as we saw before, for Japan and Korea, but also for some others, but unfortunately, most haven't. Promoting growth-friendly policies, as the ones we discussed, is of first order to raise living standards and improve the livelihoods of billions of people.